Let's talk about love. Love, I love, I scoop it out, I can't dig it. Yeah. I- Grossy Posse Packer Nation. Welcome to an episode of Packcast, the podcast where you don't. How do you pack your But it sure does help. I'm your host, Tom. Input love innuendo grassy you complete me and today we are going to be talking about one jordan love because over the past few weeks months years there's been a lot of talk about one jordan love and as we are about a month away from the start of the nfl season it's time that we have this conversation because As preseason approaches, the Packers playing their first preseason game against the Bengals this Friday, we're going to start to see more and more of Jordan Love because, as is known, we don't have much to go on. As I have said countless times on this channel, we do not know what we have in Jordan Love. There's room for confidence. There's room for concern. And I kind of wanted to just put it all together, talk about Jordan Love, and not even the expectations for the Packers, but more so Jordan Love, because him starting in September is a huge story. He is only the third Packers QB that is starting in September for me, not named Brett Favre or Aaron Rodgers, the entire time that I've been a Packers fan since I was six years old. So it's a big story. So I think it's important to talk about not only what you're hearing from the outside, whether it's beat reporters or it's national reporters looking at UCBS, which are just writing him off, or it's the too much optimism where it's like, oh my goodness, look at all these throws, but not showing the throws that led to that. I kind of just wanted to have an all-encompassing episode about about Jordan Love, my expectations for him, where I think this is going to wind up, and why I think that. And so, let's get started. So, Jordan Love, 24 years of age, of course, former first-round pick from the 2020 NFL Draft, which was met with a ton of controversy and criticism, and Packers fans screaming into piles of clothes, oh wait, that was just me. And as I have said, again, countless times, I didn't hate the player Jordan Love. I didn't like the pick at the time. And now, fast forward three years later, here we are with Jordan Love about to start in September as the Green Bay Packers QB1. And since being drafted, he has started a total of one full game. And that was in 2021 against the Chiefs after Aaron Rodgers got COVID. It was on a short week that they found out. And during that Chiefs game, you had an up and down Jordan Love, which kind of tracks considering that's what we've seen of him thus far. In that game, went 19 for 34, 190 yards, one touchdown, and one interception, was only sacked one time. And as that game went on, he started getting a little bit more confident. Of course, you had the touchdown drive, and it really felt like if the Packers got the ball back, maybe they could have pushed it downfield and scored again. But that was our first real glimpse of Jordan Love in an actual game. Yes, we've seen him in preseason before, but the 2020 season, there were no preseason games because of COVID. And in 2021, he even got injured and didn't get to play all of the preseason games. In fact, he's only played a total of five preseason games in his entire career, in which he's gone 65 for 109 attempts, four touchdowns, four interceptions, four sacks. So it is literally average across the board. And so with this lack of game time experience, even though he's been sitting and is learning and getting all the experience there, There is just a huge question mark around Jordan Love. And when there's not a ton of evidence to support whether he's good or bad, well, we know media and content creators and everyone is going to try to fill that space. And we just had a personality from CBS come out and say definitively that Jordan Love was a bad quarterback and used citations from Matt Schneidman, a beat reporter for The Athletic who covers the Green Bay Packers, used his reports, spun them completely out of context, like the conversations between Rasul Douglas and Aaron Jones and talking about how there's heat and beef between the offense and the defense and how that's indicative somehow that Jordan Love is not going to be good. So we're going to talk about all of that. We're going to talk about people's differing views of about Jordan Love, why they potentially think that, besides it being clickbait garbage because they know that Packers fans are going to click on it because 
we love our football team. And on top of that, what we've actually seen in camp and can we take any of that away and kind of make a decision on Jordan Love? And the short answer is no. So let's talk about camp because I think it's important to kind of break this down. So a few weeks ago, Rob Domofsky of ESPN, who covers the Green Bay Packers as a beat reporter, went on Get Up and said the following. He said Jordan had one really good day, one decent day, and the other days you left the practice field thinking this might be a really, really long year. And so that quote was picked up and ran with because here you had a beat reporter saying Jordan Love ugh, he had that one good day, had an OK day and everything else not giving you a ton of confidence. And let's talk about why they might have that feeling. Of course, you have the really good day in which Jordan Love was showing off the deep ball, which he seems to have gotten better at. That seems to be where the majority of the wow or the flashes are. But mostly what he's referring to is the two-minute drills. And during that time, it's offense versus defense, and they've gotten very competitive because the loser, whether it's the offense or the defense, has to do up-downs at the end of practice. So guys like Rasul Douglas, Jair Alexander, they've been chirping. Hell, Darnell Savage intercepted Jordan Love today, and Jair Alexander was letting Love know all about it. Now, of course, this is just competition. There's obviously going to be some tension between the offense and the defense because it's a competitive sport, and there's a real punishment that comes after it. Now, the defense has won the majority of those drills, and so the offense has been doing a lot of up-downs. We are going to do up-downs until Blue is no longer tired. And thirsty. So now it's time to explain, okay, why is the offense not clicking? Jordan Love has even said it's been frustrating. So let's take a step back. First of all, this is Jordan Love's first camp where he is QB1. Now, has he been able to step in previously when Aaron Rodgers was holding out or didn't show up to OTAs and things like that? Absolutely. He's gotten some reps. But with the actual starters, this is the first prolonged period of time where he is QB1. And with that comes a lot of challenges. First, he's a young quarterback who has almost no real game experience besides the handful of times that he's gone in for games. For example, like in Philadelphia, he came in in a primetime game where the Packers were down and he was able to even score a touchdown with a big help from Christian Watson. In all of 2022, he only threw 21 passes. He went 14 for 21, a little under 200 yards, one touchdown and zero interceptions. That's the sample size that we're working with here. So not only does he not have a ton of reps with the starters, which is why he was doing off-season practices with a number of players this off-season, but on top of that, there is a ton of youth and inexperience. And I'm not just talking about him as the quarterback. The QB room is very, very young and inexperienced. You got rookies that are there, like Clifford. They just got rid of Danny Etling. So he doesn't have a veteran to learn from, even though he's been in the league since 2020. On top of that, you have a young and inexperienced offensive line. Now, of course, you have Dave Bakhtiari, you have Yash Nyman, but there's some concern at center. Josh Myers has been struggling throughout practice. There's been at least five missed time snaps. So you have Zach Tom coming in for competition. On top of that, you're figuring out who is our right tackle going to be? Who are going to be our guards? So there's inconsistency and there's a couple of young guys on that offensive line. And then you talk about the tight end room. Josiah DeGuara being the most senior tight end who was drafted the same exact draft class as Jordan Love, who hasn't gotten a ton of playing time, whether it's because he's injured or he just hasn't been living up to potential. Josiah DeGuara is one of the players that I've circled who might have a breakout season because it seems like every time Jordan Love does take the field, he's looking for Josiah DeGuara. Not only does he have that connection with him on the field, but they're good friends outside of the game as well. And then, of course, you just drafted two rookie tight ends. Mercedes Lewis did not come back to the Packers, instead signed a one-year, $2 million deal with the Bears. And so tight ends, usually a major target for a young QB. They're very young and inexperienced, just like Jordan Love. And then, of course, you have our wide receivers, in which all of our receivers but one is under the age of 25. So that offense, there needs to be a lot of chemistry there, and there are going to be growing pains. You have Romeo Dobbs and Christian Watson, which there is a ton of hype behind them. Of course, you have a good running game with A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones, who should be getting involved very early in the season as Jordan Love gets more comfortable. But those are just some of the reasons as to why it's going to take a while for that offense to really kind of catch up. Meanwhile, you look at that defense. Joe Barry has been there for a number of years, and yes, 
There are plenty of issues with that defense, but there's veterans on that side of the ball as well. Not talking about safety because we're very weak there, but you have guys like Jair Alexander, Kenny Clark, Devondre Campbell, who are leaders and or have been in the league for a good amount of time that it's just going to make more sense that they're going to gel a little bit more quickly since a lot of those guys have been together for a few seasons. And you might be thinking, Tom, you're just making excuses for Jordan Love. No, I'm talking about why the offense as a whole is likely to struggle against the defense. Now, let's bring it back to Jordan Love. So not only is the offense as a whole relatively young and inexperienced, besides his left tackle and running backs, besides A.J. Dillon, because remember, A.J. Dillon was also drafted the same class that Jordan Love was, but that can help explain why you're seeing some negativity coming out of camp. And it is also really important to remember, it is just camp. I remember when Mitch Trubisky looked really, really good in Bears camp. I mean, how silly is that? Man, we're talking about practice. And this is not just my opinion. The Green Bay Packers, who have a bunch of confidence in Jordan Love, they are of the same opinion. Mark Murphy came out and said it's going to take at least half a season for them to truly evaluate Jordan Love and see what kind of player they have. Brian Gutekunst, after the first week of practice where the defense dominated, was asked, hey, what can you take away about Jordan Love? And he said, not much, because it's just camp and they're just getting started. He said, you're going to learn a lot more during joint practices, which they have one against the Patriots next week. And of course, preseason games, which Matt LaFleur came out in a press conference this morning and said, just about everyone is going to be playing in their first preseason game against the Bengals. Because at the end of the day, Jordan Love needs experience. Because what I've seen from Jordan Love is inconsistency. It usually takes him a little bit to get heated up. And once he gets a little bit more comfortable, the throws get a little bit better. And hell, you could even look at family night. You can find highlights all over the internet in which he made some great throws, one to Christian Watson in the end zone. He threw between two defenders to Aaron Jones, even though those two defenders kind of slowed up a little bit. But he also missed a bunch of throws to start that practice session. So what this is going to come down to is something that nobody likes to hear is that we just need to have patience. There is a chance that Jordan Love is not a good quarterback. That young man has gone through a ton of adversity, not only in his personal life, but of course, even being drafted at Green Bay. Fans did not like that decision. And while he is getting a lot of love now, which I'm very happy to see because he did nothing wrong, it is an uphill battle. He is also replacing a Hall of Fame QB in Aaron Rodgers. Now, the best part about that is his teammates have rallied around Jordan Love, not only just throwing up hearts, but also coming out and publicly saying, hey, this is our guy. He doesn't need to be the next Aaron Rodgers. He just needs to be Jordan Love. And the Packers seem to think that they can win football games with him as QB. And now looking on the other side of that, there is potential that he is a good quarterback. Matt LaFleur came out and said, we'd probably be able to develop more quarterbacks if we allowed them to sit for years. Jordan Love sat behind Aaron Rodgers for years. And so if we're making the argument that Zach Wilson can learn behind Aaron Rodgers and he's only been there for five minutes, why can't we make the same exact argument about Jordan Love? But at the end of the day, nobody knows. This Friday, we're going to get a decent look at Jordan Love playing a preseason game against the Bengals. He's going to have many opportunities throughout this preseason because he's likely going to be starting every single game. Now, come September, week one opener against the Bears, that is going to be the first test. But in all honesty, it's going to take us a little bit to evaluate Jordan Love. And the expectations for the Packers this year, I know they're pretty damn low. For me, this is an evaluation year. I think the Packers can win games. Hell, I think they could be a sneaky wildcard team. But it's all going to come down to coaching. We're talking about Joe Barry and that defense. But more importantly, when it comes to Jordan Love, it's going to come down to Matt LaFleur and coaching that offense. We just got done talking about the inexperience with the offensive line, the tight end room, the wide receivers, and of course, their QB. All that inexperience can lead to uncertainty and can lead to mistakes. It's up to Matt LaFleur to put that young offense, including their young QB, in the best positions to succeed. And that's why this is an evaluation year, not just for Jordan Love, but for many members of the Green Bay Packers, not just players, but coaches, GMs, and we're going to see how it's all going to pan out. But right now, to say that Jordan Love, a 24-year-old first-round QB, is a bust without him starting more than just one game is ridiculous. It's clickbait. It's garbage. 
Is there room for concern? Absolutely. The guy has very, very little experience and is with a very young offense. Is there room for optimism? Absolutely. He's a first round pick. He sat behind one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, and he has the confidence of the team around him. And so by the end of the season, we should have a pretty damn good idea on how Jordan Love actually is. We're just going to have to wait until that point. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. Before we get out of here, I want to do a big shout out and thank you to some brand new Patreon members. First, we got Hobbit, then we got The Fish 22, and we got Soul. A big shout out and thank you to you all. But you can always find me at TomGrassyComedy.com or at TomGrassyComedy, all social media see down below. Check out podcasts on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play Music, Spotify, and of course, YouTube. And a big shout out and thank you to all the patrons over Patreon.com slash TomGrassyComedy and the YouTube members. But thank you so much for watching. I'm Tom Grassy. And as always, go pack go.